А прям так. Recording in progress. Zoom record. Yeah. And of course, this event is for us to share knowledge. So we invite, encourage everyone to talk and to, to participate. So please, when uh, you want to say something, you can or unmute yourself or raise your hand and we will let you talk. And now we will introduce ourselves and uh, surprise, surprise. That's funny. So <laughs> uh, usually we conduct this event from different countries. So we are three uh, people here to co-host and our speaker. And today is a very special uh, event for us because for the first time of, 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 of history of LND Happy Space events, we are all three together in the same room, in the same city, in the same country. So hi from Invincible Kyiv, Slava Ukraini. Hello, Slava. And uh, yeah, uh, now we are going to introduce ourselves. So I am Olga. Uh, I am the CEO and co-founder of Workademy. In at Workademy, we create a, a learning management system for growing companies, and we love everything l and uh, because we want to know more about this world and bring more value to this world and bring more community and do a lot of networking. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for being with us. And I pass the mic to Zlata. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, so I'm very pleased and honored uh, to be here today. Thank you, Olga, for inviting me. I'm a senior L&D consultant and set at Center for Professional Learning, uh, which is an American organization. Um, I'm also a leader of the community of practice of Ukrainian early childhood educators and practical psychologists. And uh, one other role that I'm uh, sharing within this L&D space is I'm a board member of Ukrainian L&D community for tech companies. I'm super excited to see you all. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope we can um, we can do a little bit of uh, learning and a little bit of entertainment today. Uh, Diana, the mic is over to you. Thank you very much, Lata. Hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Diana. I'm former L&D manager at Conto. Uh, the French biggest fintech, but now I'm currently CEO uh, of Federa, the greatest Ukrainian provider of online courses and learning solutions. And I guess we we can start and proceed. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to everyone who introduces yourself. It helps a lot to understand who who is what. And thank you for sharing your LinkedIn profiles. Mm -hmm. It will help us to connect with you and for you to connect with each other. So. Exactly. Um, a few things to consider. Uh, as uh, Zlata and Ola mentioned already, we really want this workshop to be very interactive and you all are encouraged to talk and speak with us. Um, and this event is for you uh, even if you're new to l &D or if you already have any uh, strategic role there, uh, it's suitable for you if you work in HR or in corporate, uh, or if you are middle manager or even senior manager. And of course, uh, our uh, main goals is to brainstorm together, to connect, to try to find some new solutions, new idea, and of course, to get some inspiration. Okay, I guess it's perfect moment to start <laughs> small. Yeah, so um, let's start with, by looking at the way uh, the relationship and the communication and interaction between your L&D unit or you as an L&D specialist, if you're just one person in your organization and the business 
how this relationship is working currently, how this interaction is working currently. Pick one um, picture that best describes the situation right now uh, and maybe a little explanation as to why. Um, I highly encourage you to also do that in voice. You can unmute yourself and tell us about how things are between L&D and business in your organization right now. <laughs> Ola, I know you work a lot with various L&D managers. What would you say is the most frequent situation that you've observed? I saw a lot of B. <laughs> um, I saw some Cs. Uh, sometimes I saw Ds as well. Yeah. But uh, Bs are interesting because there are so many new hot topics for workshops. And then like, why? <laughs> uh, I can share as well. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so uh, like... Um, in my case, like I work in ad tech company, like advertisement. So um, I think right now it's the situation A for mm -hmm. us. Why? Because I have recently joined this company. It's been like five months and I'm like full of energy, motivation, and I want to like make the difference. And business is like kind of a, whoa, whoa, too much, too much at the one time. So it feels like I'm right now, like trying to educate XCOMs, like C-level on how to, like how actually we can make the change and make the difference within the training people. And also like, I feel um, much like, um, a lot of like, like, fright, like, I think people are frightened a bit because of the, like, if the solutions are complex, you know, so, so yeah, so I think this phase is on not around only business goals. It's also around like management and XCOMs who are like, whoa, uh, like uh, small steps, please. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. That's um... I'm very excited about you having all this energy and ambition about making the change. Hopefully everything works out. Do we have anybody else uh, who wants to share? Yeah, for me is the same. So situation A, we, I'm in a company that it's growing a lot. So the focus is growing, 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 growing. And whenever we talk about performance evaluation or structuring processes, uh, thinking about onboarding is like, yes, but growing first. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to get like L&D going in the company I met this moment. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a misalignment because I mean, how can you grow, grow, grow if you don't have great onboarding, for example? So exactly. yeah. Interesting. Uh, let's hope that uh, it also turns around uh, and uh, become great for you guys. Mm -hmm. So should we probably continue? Yeah, sure. I'm so pleased to not hear C's mentioned today. <laughs> um, so I guess we have a very advanced audience today. Yeah, uh, as a next step, I want us to think about Okay, so that's how things are right now. We have taken a look at that. So now let's dream and imagine how things would be. Uh, could you go one yeah. slide back? There's okay, never mind. Uh, if we dream about um, ideal perfect world, uh, how would that interaction, that collaboration between L and D and business, uh, look like? Um, you can do it in text in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and just tell us um, with your voice. And I understand that being a business partner is your dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, I can go, but... Um... I think L&D should really be informing all acquisition policies when it comes to new stuff and so on, especially with growth. But where we are right now at my organization is it is a battle for funds. So I'm expected to do more with close to nothing. 
and that's where we really end up. So I think L&D should also be informing financial policy at a level. So that when it comes to the HR department in general, there are funds that are highlighted just for development. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that that is a situation that's observed uh, in various organizations and um, definitely that's a very valid point. Thank you so much. Mm, uh, Anya wrote a very good mm -hmm. point. You, you want to comment? No, you can do that. Yeah. So uh, Anya Lyshenko wrote uh, that uh, it would be great uh, for L&D teams to have a dedicated business intelligence analyst who would serve as a bridge between uh, business data and goals and L&D. And yeah, it makes total sense. In like in tech product teams, they always have a product owner, business owner who connects business with product. Otherwise, developers would develop <laughs> whatever they want. So it makes perfect sense uh, for this bridge to exist, at least in my understanding. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you for you know kind of sharing your ideas as to what that perfect situation would look like. So I like to think about L&D as a business partner and the relationships that could be uh, there exactly as a partnership. Uh, it's more common, say, for people operations to be perceived as partners of business, but less common of a learning and development unit or a specialist to be perceived or to act as a business partner. In terms of partnership, how that may look like is so if we just think about partnership the partners are people who know of each other of each other's goals right uh, business partners probably share those goals and are there for each other to support and provide their resources and the expertise and kind of complement each other um, in achieving those goals so that's exactly what L&D could and probably should be doing, as in, if we go back to uh, the memes, right, uh, where the misalignment, right, and going in opposite direction and business doing that and L&D doing that, that's definitely a situation to avoid because um, after all, uh, learning and development is there for a reason. And that reason could be being extremely helpful, supportive, and useful in achievement of business goals. Um, I don't know, or maybe you could share some of your experiences. Have you seen or have you observed in your organizations or maybe some of your uh, in your network, uh, whether that's a common situation that you observe? Because from my background, I haven't seen that role being taken uh, by L&D well, frequently or that often. Um, happy, happy to read uh, your messages and chat or listen to you. The next one, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. But um, the partnership doesn't only end with achieving business goals. Uh, I think nobody needs convincing about how fast the change in our modern world is happening and how much adaptation is required from the organizations and from the people to adapt to this new context. I mean, only just in our lifetime, we have seen uh, countries and governments fail, change borders, change the global pandemic, the war. So that of course forces us to adapt and change. And um, well, actually not only uh, to these global challenges, uh, but just with the growth of the organization, right? There needs to be um, change implementation, change management, and that's exactly uh, where L&D could find uh, and could be also supportive. I mean, new tone of voice uh, in the organization, different organizational structure, new software, business pivoting. It's L&D who could be accompanying and implementing those changes. Because uh, the adaptation, it's always about acquiring something or learning something new, but also kind of unlearning the old ways that are no longer fitting to this situation. And to me, that looks like there is no better unit or no better function that could be accompanying that change. 
Um, if we go back to the next one, mm -hmm. and of course, to not only make that an anecdotal situation or a one-off thing, but to make the people uh, within the organization and the business have that quality, that adaptability to ever-changing context is, of course, the learning culture. And the way I see is that L&D are definitely those who could be the keepers, the boosters and the drivers of the learning culture mm -hmm. within the organization. And these three aspects, even though they are not that, um, they, they are all interconnected, right? And intertwined. And so I guess uh, these three could be seen as um, kind of the core, right, of what, of a bigger picture where L&D um, could be useful and could be driving business and helping people towards the business goals. Because after all, uh, right, it's the gap that needs to be bridged between uh, where we are right now and where we want to be, uh, which is the business goals. Uh, Olga, Dana, anything to, that you want to add? Um, no. Moving on. Okay. Yeah, moving on. Um, guys, uh, I will pause here for a second. Um, uh, do you have any questions, comments, um, anything that you want to add maybe to the three, maybe you have an idea of a fourth one, um, or now would be a good time. For me, I think it covers pretty much what, how I see it. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe during the next brainstorm we come up with something. <laughs> now, Shua has shared a very, um, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking that like, I have never seen any um, mature enough companies. So then l and would have a role of the learning culture keeper. I believe it's like um, uh, the way, like as we have like newcomers, um, like joining and the people are like uh, growing within the company. So then I think like we are more like learning culture um, educators or like the one who actually builds this culture. First, and, yeah. Um, yeah, less than keepers. I have never had this experience, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. The boosters, the drivers. Yeah. So I guess that that could be uh, definitely a multifaceted kind of role. Um, so how, let me share just one case I was thinking of how to illustrate that as to how that may look like in a real world case. Um, and uh, one, uh, one case from my experience that I observed in a company of how an L&D department has successfully matched and aligned their interventions with a business goal. So imagine a company, the business goal is growth, unheard of, right? Uh, never happens for companies <laughs> to, to want to grow. And the need um, that they found was that they needed more people. Basically, they did not have enough professionals to uh, provide the growth that they wanted to. And so what do you think could be an L&D support or an L&D intervention um, that could help in such a situation? Having a great onboarding? That's one way to do it, definitely. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Um, so in that specific situation, they needed um, they needed uh, software developers. And so what they did, they started their own academy, uh, mm -hmm. which was both internal and external. And so by creating this academy, they trained people who had no previous experience or who wanted to get into IT and the best students got offers and internships and work. And what they actually did was uh, several things, right? They grew in terms of uh, people and professionals and they covered that hiring need, but they also created a new business unit that was providing additional value to the business and this new work stream, right? That also generated uh, more money flow. So that's one way how um, a successful alignment of business goals and L&D interventions could look like. Uh, Olga, I know you work a lot with various companies. 
Um, any cases from your experience that you've observed? Yeah, so as, as an LMS provider, we provide people <laughs> with LMS, uh, <laughs> surprise. And um, uh, sometimes I see that uh, when people come and ask me about uh, an LMS and requirements and so on, I see clearly that uh, it's not the right time for them uh, mm -hmm. because uh, mm, uh, business is not yet there. And sometimes I even tell that, but there are times that I cannot spot it. And then we come to a situation when people acquire something that they don't use, which is a, a pity for them uh, who paid and for us as well, uh, who want uh, the software being used. It's like a CRM. If you don't have a stream of clients that you need to support coming in, maybe one or two, maybe a complex CRM system is not yet for you. So you would not acquire that. But I, I saw a couple of very successful cases when uh, business, uh, they had a strategy planning meeting, they aligned with the goals for a year. They were all clearly like, from bottom to up, from up to bottom, they knew what they wanted, and everyone was aligned about uh, new L and D initiatives, and that they would build a digital academy. And I see this academy growing in front of my eyes, like uh, and being used more and more. Analytics is getting more and more, and people love it and give feedback. Uh, but that only happened because uh, they all had st strategy planning offsite, whatever, and they planned it clearly and everyone was on board with that so in that, that that's type of uh, successes that i love to to see <laughs> wow amazing yes that's really cool story and from uh, my past experience my previous company was also growing very very fast and they were scaling at maximum and at some point they reached uh, 60 nationalities, so like employees from all over the world were working there in different offices, but there were a lot of like management issues, uh, and even though the team was very diverse, still managers had a lot of like problems managing different styles and different nationalities, and that was a perfect moment for us as L&D to step in and to provide various training on intercultural communication, leadership training to middle management and to sea level uh, on, again, how to manage different nationalities. Nice. Should we move on? Uh, unless anybody else has mm -hmm. uh, a case uh, where they also have observed or experienced or made happen a successful alignment of business goals and L&D um, activities. I can bring one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so like uh, we have a competency framework and based on the competency framework, we have like three types of different skills, like core, transversal and managerial. So we created the, uh, we got the request from legal and finance teams on how to uh, develop uh, and um, manage their projects. Um, and it's one of their core skills. Uh, so they like basically identified this gap and then like we made, uh, we like conducted several uh, interviews. I arranged the survey as well. And then we identified that actually they have more issues that are related to project management that are relationship building, communication strategies uh, and risk assessment. And apparently it's it's all uh, like all of the skills were also included in our like competency framework as core. So then we designed a two months program as a solution to uplift these four core skills. Business was like very excited about this because we didn't cover only one, we covered like four skills. And uh, also we made it more as a kind of a collaboration as we, um, as uh, like we made it this as a learning uh, blended program. So uh, cons that consists of three modules. Each module included e-learning workshop and a peer session. And what was interesting that the peer session was led by our internal expert from finance team who mm -hmm. is um, knowledge enough. So it brought the kind of a trust within the uh, participants because they know that the expert is like, understands our context, can translate the approach into augury context, yeah. So, um, yeah, and so 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 far so good. We have the 
we've been we've done already two modules and the engagement rate is like 92 percent uh yeah so uh, attendance rate is like 94 so like everyone are coming we have 18 participants yeah and they come like at least 17 they usually come so um this is my case uh -huh. yeah in case i want to you know pop champagne and celebrate it because that's an amazing case thank you so thank much you. Yeah, I, I have a question, Shoy. It, it happened already in this new work that, that you... Uh, yeah. You're... So it's a great success. I mean, uh, you told in the, at the beginning that uh, business is like reluctant and everything, but it seems like a big success for them to start believing in... Uh, yeah, yeah, they trust me. It feels like they trust me and they allow me to do things, but the face is like but just be careful please i just okay <laughs> maybe not so much at the one time you know like yeah but but yeah, yeah but they, as, as more they will see the success as more they will trust i think it's 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 super great congratulations thank you okay should be more um, yeah i just wanted to ask maria i, I saw you switching your camera uh, was there a case that you wanted to share Yes, it's actually also with uh, with training. So in my last company, we were desperate to hire DevOps. Uh, and they are very expensive profile in the market and everything. So we designed an internal planning. So we did a reskilling academy to train right. our developers uh, to become DevOps. And that was also, it was cool. <laughs> I think it was a cool project. We like uh, saw all the competencies that we needed and we did a blend uh, reskilling academy. We had some asynchronous training, some synchronous, and it actually went pretty well. We got at the time three DevOps that were like really nice. good. <laughs> hey, three, that's, that, that's really a lot. And um who was the subject matter experts like who was providing the training we had some internal training uh, trainers then we used a lot udemy a uh, training platform uh, with course online and we also had an external provider in a specific topic that were uh -huh. our internal trainers were not that comfortable with yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, that's a very, um, I mean, that's blended learning, you know, taking to a very yeah. advanced level. Cool. That, that's a big uh, success. Uh, yeah. In terms of budgeting, I can just imagine how much it would cost the recruiting process, the hiring process, the onboarding process for three highly paid DevOps engineers. Yeah. The... Speaking of such an onboarding process, I have uh, my next case where, which is kind of a, um, a case that could be could have gone much better, uh, uh, like uh -huh. uh, and that's also about high profile uh, senior um, uh, developers. Um, but how things went uh, very differently from Maria's story. <laughs> so imagine a company that has already invested a lot of effort, uh, money, resources, time into developing a platform. Uh, and they still haven't gotten to the point where they want to be. So uh, the senior management makes a decision to hire um, a smaller team that can come in and redo everything very quickly. So you can imagine uh, the level of professionals that need that are required to do that. But they actually managed to find such people who are willing to start like right now. And what happens on the first day uh, of their job? So the time when where they could be, you know, kind of getting familiar with the project, understanding the code base, the LED department gets them to do a training on culture, which consists of thirty modules, and takes up like several hours. So. One other side note is that the people who were hired, they uh, were not completely new people. Um, lots of people in that company already knew them and even worked together. So there was no real pressing need to do that uh, training on culture and spending all that time and effort, which could have been spent in this critical situation on already doing the job that these people were hired to do. 
So uh, that's one example of how business goals and L&D interventions could be kind of uh, in misalignment and detached from each other. Um, any failed cases, <laughs> you ladies? Uh, yeah. Uh, so as an LMS provider, <laughs> We provide uh, LMS to people uh, still. <laughs> still, yes. And of course, uh, we had uh, failed. It, it was not a, a failed case. I saw like a big case of misalignment. So exactly uh, uh, what uh, we are talking here. Uh, so I had a call with a potential client. He was super excited about an LMS. Uh, we spent a lot of time together like uh, um, because he had some requirements in mind and we have some features uh, on LMS and we were like uh, war talking and uh, we had several calls we even met in Berlin and it was so nice uh, almost there and then he was like ah oh. in the end I realized I don't have budget for that and I said but how come you came to me in the first place and he said ah oh, because we had some meetings with management and they told us that uh, we are going to reboost L&D but for him, reboosting LND meant one thing, while for management, it meant com completely another thing. So he was excited because he thought that they finally would build digital onboarding programs. This is why he started looking for an LMS. And I was not the only one whom he spoke to. I don't mind to spend my time talking to potential customers because for me, it's not wasted time. Even if they don't buy, I still learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And we learn a lot how to improve the system on, on basis of uh, several requirements that we are being spoke to. But for him, it was, uh, it was a lot of time spent on this because it was several providers he spoke to and then in the end like it's all for nothing and even he knows something about the systems but in half a year or in a year when he will come back to the situation it will be all different so he would be um, forced to come through, to go through this process again and it will be again the time spent and where we talk time spent it's money spent because it's business so yeah it was a very sad case to see this happening for for this particular lnd person mm -hmm. well hopefully they figured it out yeah um well guys we heard some success stories from you um any uh, any stories that are colored with a different color here <laughs> Okay, feel free to to text maybe later. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah we're still here. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's good that uh, yes. you have to think. <laughs> that's basically a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the only reason to mention them is, you know, kind of to learn from them and to see. Um, okay, so what are the things that should be there and what are the things that maybe shouldn't be so? Because uh, the misalignment it may look very different. Uh, could we move to the next one, please? Mm -hmm. Right. So what, what are we going to do about this? There are several parameters uh, that I think are important to consider uh, when working towards aligning L&D interventions and L&D activities with business goals. Well, first of all, uh, what an L&D manager or an L&D unit could be doing is being at the level of business goals. Uh, I think... Is it okay? Can you guys hear me? Because it all froze for me. No, uh, it uh, for for me it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Sorry. Right. Being uh at the level of business goals. Well, ideally having a seat at the table and ideally actually participating in formulation and in designing of those business goals. Um. But again, that's. <laughs> A perfect world, right? Uh, it's not possible in all the organizations, but at least knowing them and being aware of these business goals, uh, that's definitely kind of a first step to do because like, if I don't know, what am I going to do next? But say in my experience, um, in one of the actually, I think most successful L&D departments that I have been a part of, we actually had a situation where we were not aware 
um, or at least we were not communicated the business goals. That's uh, just the way uh, the communication flew uh, in uh, in that company. But we still did not want to be that l and department that is doing just some um, really nice workshops about whatever topics uh, they uh, feel they enjoy. So we just proactively went and found uh, that information and those goals. And then the l and strategy that we designed uh, was stemming from basically business strategy and business goals. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that that's uh, probably not a typical case where there is no enough transparency or not enough communication. Hopefully in your organizations, that's a very open and well-communicated information. But even if it's not, there are still things you can do uh, to get to that level of business goals. So uh, once that is clear and so you know, you understand them, um, you really know what that means in term, in practical terms. This is where L&D strategy stems from. Uh, I believe that L&D strategy cannot be designed in vacuum. It cannot be designed just for the sake of L&D. There is no point in having really nicely trained um, staff if that does not bring the company towards the goals that it designed for itself. And so once the L&D strategy is in place, uh, the time for L&D intervention comes. And those interventions, they are actually the bridge, right? What we're trying to do is to bridge the gap between how we are, what are we are like right now as um, people in this organization and as an organization and what we are doing and what we should be like and what skills, knowledge, whatever we need to have and what we should be doing to be able to achieve those goals. And so L&D interventions, that's what they do. They, they bridge that gap. And ideally, well, I guess no L&D talk um, passes without uh, the conversation about measuring the learning outcomes and the results. Yeah. So ideally, <laughs> and all guys and LMS providers <laughs> <laughs> knows that the analytics. So, not only to be able to show that to the learners, to the business, to management, to prove that what we're doing is valuable, but also to know ourselves, uh, what are the results of what we're doing? Of course, the conversation of whether it's possible to measure all the learning outcomes and success of learning interventions, that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. But having a certain metric or having certain indicators that would mean that that gap is being breached uh, is a really cool thing. And then one thing, um, last but not least, uh, to pay attention to is that once you have successfully gone through those four parameters, staying open and flexible to change yourself as an L&D manager or an L&D unit uh, would be really important because adaptation and um, this ever-changing environment that requires from us as well. And asking that question, whether I'm doing what's really necessary in this context with this particular gap in this particular organization, or whether I'm just replicating uh, my success stories or my best practices mm -hmm. that worked once in some other context, so there is no harm in doing that while that is still relevant in the new context. So that's just um, kind of uh, a, a little tip, a little trick to, to keep in mind. And at this point, uh, what I invite us to do, the next slide, mm -hmm. would be um, a bit of a, uh, I don't know, not a creative, well, it's a creative task, to mm -hmm. creative, analytical. So I want you to switch on your curious eye and look at how the relationships uh, between L&D unit and uh, business are right now. So kind of the next step from what we did at the beginning. And looking at those four, uh, sorry, five parameters that we have just talked about, um, on this Jamboard, you can pick uh, a page for yourself, or we have multiple pages. So look at what already works well, 
and uh, you can uh, write on these um, stickers, right? And you can actually multiply them. I'm sure you, I don't need to explain that you know how jam boards work, but if you want to write more than four, that's fine. You can just duplicate them. And then also think about the aspect that could be improved. So basically, uh, I'm thinking, okay, so how how's the interaction between my L and D interventions and business goals are, right? So am I at the level of business goals? Do I know them? So go through this list, right? Think of different aspects and try to put those into boxes, right? The things that you generally think work well and the things that you believe can be improved. You have these parameters on every page. Basically, every page is the same. So you can just, uh, at the top, there is this bar that you can uh, flip, right? And um, get yourself a new page. I think we have like five minutes, right, to do mm -hmm. this. But I will shut up right now for a second to allow you guys to ask questions or clarify if there was something that's not completely clear. I actually have a question. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, every time we sp we speak about L and D strategy being aligned with business goals, it seems that we assume that business has clear goals. I'm sorry <laughs> for making that assumption. <laughs> uh, which sometimes is not the case. Uh, I've seen cases like this, and I I think that this can also be a problem. And actually, you have this uh, parameters level of business goals. Like you. You might work like in a business that doesn't communicate those goals clearly. Yeah, or doesn't formulate them for themselves clearly. Yeah. Uh, but then um, I guess that would very much depend on uh, your place in the organization. Maybe then you want to suggest that, okay, guys, maybe that's time for a strategic session, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, or maybe mm -hmm. you can be the one who conducts this strategic session. So that's also kind of, uh, right, if you assess that and the very first parameter doesn't work well, that's the gap and that's the intervention that, yep. you, that you need yep. to do. Okay, right. I guess you all are gonna have like three, four minutes mm -hmm. to fill up the stickers and then we'll see. Yeah, and there is a link in the chat to uh to access that jump board, but I see there are already people there just in case mentioning that. And if you have any questions or anything was not completely clear, let me know. And also while you're doing this task, think if you want uh your case um uh, then to to talk about it and maybe um, we can discuss it. And of course, if you don't want to feel it, you don't need to leave. <laughs> Just stay with us for several minutes that other people who want to feel this thing, because this is something that you can take with you uh, back to your work and uh, use it. Not only your uh, uh, this how, how is it called slide but also other people's collective uh, brainstorming so and also that's an activity that that you can um do repeatedly right if you look at it say once a month over a cup of coffee for five minutes that will also bring you a lot of um benefits in terms of kind of okay thinking right where where are we right now where are, have we improved uh is there anything that uh, works better than before. So, yeah. I will also feel one. Can I? We have 17 things. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will grab the third one. No one is here. Yes, I'm second. Where can I put my name?
Oh. Yeah, I I don't work at another company. I guess we have like another minute, right, to, to wrap mm -hmm. up this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm just flipping through some of the uh, slides and uh, well, it looks guys that you really kind of got invested into it. I'm really happy to see that this. Um, does anybody want to uh, want to talk about uh, their case and you know kind of present it to the group and we can, uh, comment a little bit um, on what's going on. That's that's just a perfect chance for you to have a collective mind uh, uh, working on your case. So don't be shy. I really like seeing that uh, some of you guys have a uh, that you have become parts of this um, business strategic discussions. Shira, I see you wrote a lot on your cards. Um, do you maybe want to talk about? Um... Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, so, um, I wrote what works well now, like at augury. So, um, here I meant I mentioned alignment with business needs using competency framework. Yeah. Like once I joined in uh, two months, the competency framework was launched. So it was a great opportunity for me to to have a kind of a yeah uh, understanding of okay of what are the skills that business actually expects from each and every job family domains that we have inside like business development, business support, and product development. So yeah, it really helps me to then build around the competency framework the L and Z strategy. So that's why it's really nice tool. And I think every company needs to have it. And then um, blended learning. Yeah, like I was, uh, once I joined, I um, I proposed to have uh, and test out a variety of um, e-learning modules that I created by myself uh, with the experts. So this was a kind of a proposal from my side to, as a tool uh, for like scalable tool for knowledge sharing i would say and it worked very well because like people really liked it they liked that it was actually like some e-learnings that are 10 minutes 20 minutes you know and um for this uh thing we the the, the entrance was like very easy the mvp that we took we, we took the seven taps tool if you know this yeah, yeah. and yeah it's super easy to use yeah and and etc and it was like just a good way to show okay we don't need lms for now what we can just test out is like okay if people actually like e-learnings in general and if it would work and uh yeah and they had this trial period it's free so yeah a lot of cool things then um great involvement of chief people officer yeah she 
She's the one who promotes um, a cultural learning team in general and the, the need, you know. So I think it's uh, essential to have a champion in XCOM level. And then ad hoc training needs, identification and execution. It's really nice um, the way how people like, uh, so once I joined, I understood that there are a lot of uh, like emails I started to receive a lot of emails where people are asking about something like, hey, I have this gap. Can we cover this? Can I have this training? And I'm like, okay, it doesn't work. Like just uh -huh. emails, a lot of emails. So uh, we just set up the process with the form, with the criteria, uh -huh. everything is like super transfer, uh, tra trans, um, well, it sounds like you already that, right? Yeah. Huh? It sounds like you have already improved that. Ah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Thank you. Um, let's keep the rest of that for our next step. And our next step is that uh, Dan is going to invite you guys to breakout rooms. So now that you have these two boxes filled out, right, the things that work well in terms of these parameters of level of business goals on the strategy gap, result measurement, and openness to change. And you kind of took a look at what are the things that can be improved. So uh, you will have three minutes, right? Mm -hmm. To um, you will be divided into uh, several breakout rooms amongst yourself. Mm -hmm. Pick one um, case that you have uh, on this jam board and brainstorm five steps, first five steps that like very practical that can be taken to improve those things that uh, can be improved, right? Mm -hmm. So to make the alignment between L&D and business goals uh, better. Uh, just a second, mm -hmm. we are building the these rooms. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we we can go. Okay. Right. So uh, five steps to take to improve uh, the alignment with business. And show you left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, she, she. Maria, did you get invited into a breakout room? Uh, not yet, I think. Mm. I don't know how that happened. Uh, just a second. Oh, now oh. I got invited. I will join. <laughs> okay. Have a nice day, Alina. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. А вы хотите походить по кімнатах і взагалі побачити що? Close.
we need more time <laughs> oh i'm so sorry <laughs> we get together like we get together and there was like 40 seconds left. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys, uh, because we we have only two minutes to to finish. So I guess that whatever sparkle of ideas you got there, please take it with you. And uh, yeah, because... yeah, right after right after the school, put them down so that you have those, you know, first steps that you can take to improve that. And that could be um, kind of, you know, sometimes after the task, you know, some an hour passes and you get an idea. So make sure to know that. And uh, yes. I have one other thought that I wanted to leave you with uh, mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, thinking can... about alignment. Uh, the next one. Um, this so that's two one questions. One. No, the next one. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Breathe, breathe. It's okay. <laughs> and so uh, hopefully you can maybe take a screenshot or uh, put them for yourself. So uh, whenever I want to check or see whether alignment is there, so I want to ask what is the most valuable uh, for the company is right now? And then what is blocking company from achieving that valuable thing? And so if you look at these questions, they're about the same thing, right? But maybe, um, you know, kind of reframing the thinking to this direction. So these are the two questions I want to leave you uh, with today. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, your engagement and participation. And it was amazing to see your faces and to connect with you guys. Um, thank you so much for this hour. Uh, hopefully there was a little bit of uh, use uh, for you in it. Um happy to connect with you on LinkedIn or whatever platform you're using. Olga? Yeah, so please uh, take the screenshot of this slide as well. You can follow us, Workademy and Edera and uh, Zlata. And yeah, let's stay connected and be in touch and together find solutions to complex challenges. And uh, we will also, after this webinar, we will send you the link to LND Strategy Blueprint. Uh, for those who know, there is an like European community of uh, LND professionals called LND Shakers. And uh, I am a part of this community. And we've been working. Uh, we've been working creating this uh, LND Strategy Blueprint for like. Uh, more than a year and it's uh, finally out i will send it to you it's amazing and it also contains resources on how to make sure that uh, business strategy is uh, aligned or uh, lnd strategy is aligned with business goals and business yeah needs. i really recommend you guys take a look at that file when I, when it was released my direct just exploded with everybody you know telling me like have you seen that like, yeah i have seen it but everybody was super excited and uh, buzzing about this file so definitely worth taking a look at yes thank you very much everyone and we'll see each other in one month thank or maybe you even sooner <laughs> thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye Stop recording. Did I? Ah. Uh...